And now, Rad Fan presents Rad Talk. Hello and welcome. My name is Ryan Alexander Davis. My friends call me Rad. And to my right, we have the man, the myth, the legend, Colin Fitzpatrick. And today we're doing a new thing. We're calling it Television Nightmare. Nightmare. It might be funnier if I don't put an effect on that. You don't have to. It's. it's... Do I have effects? <laughs> um, so, uh, I watch a lot of TV. Like, more than any person should, to be quite honest. Um, I don't. Yeah. Actually, this is um, why this is fun for me, because I, I play too many video games. I also don't have access to cable, but I have Netflix and all that stuff. And but... I have all the channels, you know, I have Amazon Prime, I have all the things, and I watch This isn't everything. an ad for Netflix or Amazon Prime. No, uh, but I, I have, <laughs> I use all the things to watch all the TV. Yeah. Um, so... What should I talk about first? My, like, favorites or, like, the worst? I want to know the worst because I'm just curious. And, uh, I, I, like I said, I just play too many video games. Okay. I haven't watched a lot of TV. The worst show I've seen so far, I think, is Minority Report. Oh, yeah. How is, the, how is Minority so, Report? So, remember the movie Minority Report? I remember the movie yeah. Report. Yeah. Well, take that. Okay. And make it. Every TV show that has one cop paired with one person who has, like, a special ability that helps them solve crime. So I'll tell you something funny. I yeah. saw a, a Fox trailer, and they were intersplicing scenes of Minority Report with Gotham. <laughs> and I was just like, wow, what's what's happening in Gotham? Like, because I didn't realize that there was a show about Minority Report that was coming out. <laughs> so I thought that Gotham had lasers now, and I, I didn't realize what And people happening. who could see the future. Yeah, right? I was like, wow, Gotham's getting intense. Uh, so, should yeah. we talk about Gotham? Let, like, maybe okay. we should roll into Gotham. <laughs> Gotham has got laughably bad and, like, screw you, you like Batman laughably like as in is this the segue into the joker or are you is that, is that you being funny have you ha, have you heard anything about i have this i've season? heard that okay. there's some joker so talk but if that's you all don't I know. know there was a joker like character he, that's what i heard so um barbara keen who's been gordon's girlfriend the first season oh okay uh, future commissioner gordon's girlfriend barbara keen ends up going like crazy basically <laughs> when her and uh jim gordon break up oh uh, and she gets sent to arkham oh yeah and she goes like bonkers okay and so um, not barbara gordon everybody yeah okay. exactly <laughs> uh, or maybe who oh. knows um so someone breaks them out her and this guy who has like red hair and he's like young and he like laughs like the joker but and he joker. he like kills people and laughs and they wrote maniacs on people's bodies like an m and an a and an a and threw him off a building and he's laughing and then he kills one of his own guys and he's laughing and ha 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 ha, ha. so Spoiler <laughs> alert, by the way, everybody. Oh, yeah. Everyone Ma go back to the video. Major, huge, enormous <laughs> spoiler alert. If you watch Gotham... Okay, if you watch Gotham <laughs> and you're not up to date, like, so there's something, like, really wrong with, the, like, your TV habits, I have to say. Because <laughs> I don't oh, care. Oh, I'm saving all the Gotham. <laughs> I, I really don't care. I'm a big Batman fan, but I, I don't really mind. So, uh... uh but the new villain we meet, who orchestrated the prison break, stabs him in the neck. Oh, the, on, the Joker guy? Yeah, okay. on live TV to save baby Bruce, Bruce Wayne's life. So he wanted to save baby Batman, become a hero of the city, okay. so he could become like a new boss and like run for mayor and so like, take that audience he's not the joker ha -ha. yeah but after he died all these people in the streets and stuff were watching tv and they're like ha 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 and then like would kill a homeless guy or like stab the guy next to him as if that one person and being killed on tv like that infused Infe infected the, the, the city of gossip with jokerism okay <clears throat> And 
you know, leads us to believe that the Joker is inevitable yeah. in some way. No, but like, um, and yeah. would also like <laughs> screw you, everyone who likes Batman, everyone who <laughs> likes the Joker is gonna be upset about this. <laughs> well, here's the th I'll just put this out there, you know, I, I I as a Batman fan have always believed that like there was this implication that the Joker is kind of born of the evils of Bat of, of Gotham City and like he kind of like comes out as a phantom like you don't know about his his past you know this this clown man just kind of appears you know and you don't know anything about him and he's he's mysterious but this whole thing you know with the Joker being, you know, 20 years in Batman's past implies that he's existed for so long in ba in Gotham's history that they would know a lot more about him and, like, this infusion in the in the annals of Gotham's history and, like, all these people showing these, these signs of behavior. I don't know. I feel like it's... It's it's a long time. Like this is like a long like history. It's of true. Time. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that's uh, why uh, I feel like it's funny that they have people like Edward Nigma who like is gonna be the Riddler, sure. and it's like oh he's a good like fifteen to twenty years older than Bruce Wayne. So like so now, if you imagine like Batman punching him, you're like, you punched an old man. He's like, how old would he be? He'd be like sixty years old. Like, <laughs> like you're just being a jerk. Um, <laughs> But what I do like, so remember the Penguin and how he was introduced in this show as yeah. like a tall man, slender. Very different character. Yeah, very yeah. different than the uh, Penguin we're used to. So because of the events of last season, he got like shot and like, you know, all these things happened to him. He now has like a limp and he like watches he like walks like hunched over okay so i think the plan like the might be wind. is by the time the show ends he's danny devito okay you know like he devolves from like a person who's tall and bright to this to the penguin <laughs> <laughs> you know and his somehow his fingers fuse together right. and you know he becomes that yeah um uh, uh, gotham i don't know i i just I can't. I'm sorry. I can't. No, and I, I understand. I'm sorry, Gotham fans. Uh, <laughs> so let's switch gears, <laughs> uh, but stay in the realm of the superheroes. Okay. Um, I have been watching The Flash. Ooh. Um, it's pretty good. You like The Flash. I like The Flash. I think it only suffers from being on the CW uh, because the CW tends to aim towards that like young adult crowd. Uh, and the Arrow is way more guilty of that. Like, the Arrow seems like it could be, like, a Pretty Little Liars kind of show. Or, like, I, I don't even know. I, I don't even think that's a CW show, but... <laughs> the Arrow's, like, like Gilmore Girls. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, but The Flash only has, like, a touch of that, you okay. know, where it's like, oh, look at this love triangle. And I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, we met... Spoilers! The whole thing spoilers. This is not the a title show will for... just be spoilers. Yeah, okay, there's too much spoilers. Um, remember when people didn't say that? Um, <laughs> everything's a spoiler. Everything's a spoiler. Uh, but we met alternate Earth Flash Jay Garrick. So, like, he's also from the comic books. He would be the Golden Age Flash, who existed, oh, okay. like, um, in, like, the 30s and 40s. Okay. Um, so we met him. He came through a portal that was created in the last season, basically. Okay. And it's like, I'm here now, and I'm also the Flash. And they're like, we don't believe you. <laughs> but it was cool. It was a comic book thing because always in comics, two good guys meet and immediately hate each other. You know, right. it's like, oh, Spider-Man and Wolverine. It's like, let's fight. Oh, we're after the same guy. Let's team up. I have that comic. Yes, I have like 12 of them. <laughs> I thought it was like, different. Ones. I thought it was rare, and it's not. It's no, not a rare comic actually. No, they they team up and don't like each other all the time. <laughs> uh, it's, I I could get off on superhero. Yeah, no, that's for it's, ever. It's true. Uh, but the Flash has been pretty good. It's not like the best show, but even again, just comparing it to Arrow, I think it's a much better produced and stays like as true as it can to its source material without getting too into the like craziness because mm. the flash can 
run back in time. He can vibrate through different dimensions mm -hmm. on parallel planes. He can, you know, he can do a lot of crazy stuff. And there's multiple flashes and multiple timelines. And they're doing that, but in a very ex accessible way. Mm -hmm. So I, I every, like it a lot. Every time I hear about The Flash, it is insanely confusing. Um, yes. <laughs> it's and, like that is usually what the deal is with The Flash. There's like 12 of them. And you can watch this show and it'll help you even like understand the comic book mythos that is The Flash. Because like one funny thing about The Flash, as a side note, is like if you read comics from like the 70s to like the early 2000s, your Flash was Wally West. Mm. Yeah, the original Flash that. of the Silver Age was Barry Allen. Mm -hmm. And that's who we have on the TV show now. So it's like, it's almost funny that they didn't go with like the more well-known because the more well-known was a reiteration of a remake of a character. Right. Uh, that they went with like the one they kind of always wanted. And I think it's cool because then we can watch it progress and maybe get another Flash and maybe another Flash. And, like, it's it's fun. <laughs> I like it a lot. So, moving on the from Flash. there. So, let's talk about South Park and yeah. what's been happening there. South Park. Um, I love South Park. It's a fun show. I It crushes me to say that I haven't been enjoying this season that much. I like the, uh, I like the episode about... <laughs> Uh, that was making fun of the downtown remodeling in Los Angeles. Yeah, the gentrification right. of South Park. I thought that was really funny, actually, and really on point and pretty smart and hilarious. The first two episodes were killing me, actually, of this season. I thought they were really not funny and, uh, you know, kind of disappointing because I like last season a lot and um, I thought last season was you know pretty funny yeah and entertaining. But something that happened last season that hadn't really happened in the past is they decided that like the whole show would be a continuous narrative right. which I thought was kind of neat uh, but felt a little tired towards the end um, and then felt forced at the beginning of this season as last season it was all about Randy being Lord uh, right. Pop singer Lord. That's, that's right. Uh, who I've, I've seen in concerts. Uh, you, you've actually seen Lord in concerts. Yes, and I can attest that it, it is Randy Marsh. It it's, looks just. It stands. Uh, wow. Yeah, it stands. Wow. Dad With is the mustache in and everything. Lord. It, wow. You can't tell, but you can tell. It's but it, wow. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it's just not what it used to be because before, if you wanted to carry over stories, they'd at least make it a part one, part two, like Imagination Land. Yeah. Uh, but instead, now we're getting it as just kind of like, hey, if you didn't watch last week, like, too bad. <laughs> you know, they're no longer these self-contained. No, yeah. It, it's not just like cute callbacks. It's like, no, if you don't know who these characters are, it's not going to make sense. It's like Arrested Development. A little yes, bit. <laughs> which like a lot of people I got into too late and hated it, and then only on DVD was like, oh, I love this. Like, so we should talk about The Simpsons. The Simpsons. We literally just watched <laughs> The Simpsons. We stopped halfway through this video and watched The Simpsons. Yeah. Because uh, it's Sunday night when we're taping this, <laughs> and I can't not watch The Simpsons. It would bother me to know that somebody somewhere has seen more episodes of the simpsons more than me simpsons. yeah so i have to <laughs> see it so i could continue to say i've seen them all um so there was one tonight and it was a halloween episode but it wasn't a normal halloween no episode. it wasn't your typical it, it halloween was episode. not a treehouse of horror in fact it was a Halloween episode, like any other TV show would have, like one linear story throughout the whole thing. It took place on Halloween, and The Simpsons uh, had a normal uh, everyday story. Well, it wasn't a normal everyday story. Eh, but it wasn't <laughs> like wacky or zany or like, you know, parodying The Shining. It was grounded something. in reality. Exactly. Guess, is what you could and say. <laughs> I liked it. I uh, did too, actually. It was funny. <laughs> we've never really seen The Simpsons celebrate Halloween besides like oh we're at our house and we're telling stories maybe or but <laughs> mostly recently it's just been like you know the drill we're gonna do three stories we're not gonna put a framing device around it we're right. just gonna do it and you know i'll say this i'm not a big fan of a lot of recent simpsons episodes like a lot of simpsons fans would say uh over the last i don't know 13 
15 or so ish seasons. I'm not a big fan yeah. of every episode I see, but you know, I, I laughed. I thought this episode was funny. It, it actually was very entertaining. I'm a fan of the older seasons and I thought this was very funny. So it was good. It had like a lot of overt humor and a lot of really subtle humor and of course they had like all the simpsons like sight gags and every like <laughs> sign you know every costume and it was a funny gag and there's a fun little song in it you know yeah and uh <laughs> maybe not like uh, as memorable as like the monorail or the sure. greyhound songs <laughs> but it wasn't also one of those songs that just took you out of it no, you know it was, it was like oh a fun little thing and it's it's like a long joke and uh <laughs> i liked it so Good job. It's been a lot better than most of the episodes this season so far. Um, in one, I think last week, uh, Patty and Selma decide to quit smoking. Oh, really? I missed yes. that one. <laughs> and I actually had a thought. I was like, man, if Patty and Selma quit smoking, maybe I can. And then by the end, they both started again. And I was like, oh, screw it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well. And I understand they're fictional characters. but yeah. Old habits die hard. But yeah, and there was like a whole thing like where one of them started smoking again. And the other one was like, I can't live with you anymore. <laughs> and then at the end, it was like they just pulled out cigarettes, started smoking again. And I was like. Okay. Okay. And then Maggie went Sounds on a little cool. <laughs> adventure with like a bunch of animals from the neighborhood. Okay. Yeah. That's a B plot. It That's... it was. <laughs> and it was like broken into like eight acts or something. So you kept seeing like, you know, like woodcuts that were like act one. Really? Yeah. It was very like, what are we doing? Okay. So it's good to see if they can have some good ones sprinkled out, you know, throughout all the and not so good place. <laughs> I'll have to check it out. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I want to talk about uh, a show that I think a lot of people wanted to like, but I think is going to end up being terrible. It's called The Bastard Executioner. I don't even know this one. So it's uh, Kurt Stutter, Kurt Sutter, okay. the guy who created Sons of Anarchy. Okay. Um, everyone's favorite show. Everyone's favorite show. <laughs> uh, so... It's about like a medieval executioner, I guess. So I watched the first few episodes. And the first episode's like you meet like 10 characters. Okay. And then throughout the episode, about eight of them die. Okay. And I was like, I, I don't care at that point. I was like, <laughs> it's I, the first episode. <laughs> so many people just kept dying. And it really just felt like they were trying to mash up what's like popular right sure. now in tv um i can't figure out if i want to call it sons of thrones or games of anarchy games of thronarchy yeah because <laughs> that's what it feels like but they're right. just doing it poorly and i'm hmm. like it's okay to have characters die if it like helps your plot but why introduce us to a character just to kill them like later in that episode when we've just started. Right. If you slaughter characters before you have a narrative, we don't care about yeah, them. Yeah, like, don't show me five <laughs> minutes and then kill them. Like, it, uh, it didn't make sense. And the second episode had, like, a dream with, like, a really bad, like, CGI dragon in it. And I was like, what is happening? Like, who is this for? <laughs> is it, it, it's not, I mean, it's called the Bastard Executioner, but it's right. not a joke or anything. No, right? it's supposed it's, to be like hardcore, like, okay. we're, uh, <laughs> you know, like Sons of Anarchy. There's no like joke to it. Like it's Bastard like, as in like Bastard Sword or something? Or like, or, or like, at least the Bastard Son or something? Yeah. Okay. He's I, like, <laughs> I'm not, it was hard for me to pay attention. Got it. it was just like, <laughs> I don't care. But yeah, he's a, bastard and he executes or, all right i don't know but yeah i thought that was a really i'd play the game yeah no it it would be a much better game i'll play the game yeah i'll play the, I'll play the bastard executioner game i think that'll be a cool experience <laughs> uh i'm going down the list in my mind of what other shows oh there's two comedies okay. I wasn't expecting to like and i can't say that i'm sold on them completely but one is called grandfathered Oh, and yeah. it has, um, oh my god, I can't think of his name. He played Uncle Jesse on oh, Full House. Uh, uh, Stamos. John Stamos. Stamos. So it stars him. Rebecca Romaine's husband. He plays, there's a cat meowing in the background. Um, 
Let me just. He's just a jerk. Um, <laughs> okay. Re Rebecca Romaine's husband. Yes. So, uh, grandfather, jo Jonathan Stamos, uh, Rebecca Romaine's ex husband? Ex husband. Um, right. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Rebecca Romaine. If you're watching this, which I know you are. Of course. Uh, everyone does. Sorry. She's one of my 15 subscribers. Right. In <laughs> fact. Um, she's going to watch this. I hope so. So, um, he, oh, he has a hairball because he's a poor guy. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm leaving all of this in. You should leave um, it in. My, my, yeah, my cat's like puking on the ground uh, while we're filming here. But <laughs> so he meets his adult son for the first time that he didn't know he had. Okay. Who is Josh Peck of Drake and Josh fame. Okay, yeah. And he has a daughter when he meets him, and so he instantly becomes a grandfather, even though he's like, cool guy, he's John Stamos. grandfather. And he owns, like, a really hip restaurant in L.A., and, you know, like, likes hitting on young girls, and all of a sudden he's a grandpa. Got um, Slightly better than it sounds. Um, <laughs> uh, I really like the main woman in it is uh, Paget Brewster. Oh, okay, I know she's Paget like a character Brewster. out actor yeah. who's been in everything. Yeah. She was on Community last season. I know she is. Yeah, uh, I adore her. I think she's fantastic. She's really funny. Yeah. She's really good in it. Uh, so that's mostly why I watch it. And then the other one, which comes on either right before or right after it, uh, is called The Grinder. <laughs> And it stars Rob Lowe and um, Fred Savage. Oh, I've heard of this. Yeah, I've actually seen trailers for it. It's good. Is it good? It's like way better than you think it's really? going to be. So Rob Lowe was on a hot shot uh, law and order type show or like a, you know, one of those like LA law. Or, he was on a show like that for like years and years. Yeah. And then it ends. And he moves back to his like hometown and his brother and dad own a law firm, like their partners in a law firm. And he decides he wants to be a lawyer now and he's going to help them. And like, of course, everyone recognizes him and like he thinks, you know, he's a hotshot lawyer. And then his brother, Fred Savage, the actual lawyer is just like, you know, You're up in insane. arms about yeah. him. <laughs> uh, but everyone loves him. And yeah. If you want to see a show full of faces you recognize, like just mainstays of TV for yeah. the past 10, 20 years, like you will recognize everyone. And I can't <laughs> even name most of them, you know, because they're those people, but you're like, right. oh, I've seen you in a million movies and on a million TV sure. shows. And you just get like all of those. <laughs> um, and Fred Savage is back on TV. He's a director. I know. He <laughs> was doing It's Always Sunny in yeah. Philadelphia for a while. I don't know if he still is. I'm is that sure. show still going? I'm, I think it is, or it was on its later season. I gave but... up on that show when it became, I can yell the most. Oh, I can yell the most. Look how way crazy I am. I mean, I, I don't know every episode of that show, but I think it's funny. And like, yes, it did kind of degrade to a point where it was just screaming at each other. And I'm like, oh my God, they're just screaming at each other. It's true. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like I, for what it's worth, the, what little I've seen of that show is funny, um, and I, I think, you know, it's a cute show. It's funny, uh, but I don't watch a lot of it. Um, oh, and it came that, uh, a came that's gone and come already. Uh, <laughs> a show that's come and gone is uh, Fear the Walking Dead. So was that a, a sequel? Uh, of the well, Walking Dead? it's, you know, a spinoff. Uh, okay. So it deals with the actual like events leading up to and the beginning of the zombie apocalypse. So in The yeah. Walking Dead, spoilers, uh, it starts, the series like starts with Rick getting shot and right. then waking up in a coma right. and the zombie apocalypse. Is already it's already happened. happened. And then in the comic book, they string you along for a long time leaving you breadcrumbs not telling you how the apocalypse exactly. happened. Exactly. And you still all. like don't really know in the comics. Right. Like but in here they're saying, let's show you, let's see how it happened. And it's been like really fun to watch, I think, because zombie movies 
it happens quick, mm -hmm. and then we're, uh, we're we're zombies. Uh, but I like Fear the Walking Dead because you can really see what happens in a zombie apocalypse, like as it happens, mm -hmm. uh, which is nice. And it's also in LA. A lot of things have been in LA this year. Oh, really? You know, uh, True Detective was in LA. Okay. Uh, Ray Donovan takes place in LA and I was like, Oh, support for West coast. <laughs> um, I guess cheap filming. Yeah. <laughs> right. Please film here. I'm not moving to Canada, New Zealand. <laughs> uh, so I really like it. It only had six episodes though. And yeah. like those six only really got you to like, it's becoming a zombie world. Like zombies are happening but people are still trying to pretend like we're in a real world and, you know, we still have order and the uh, military is still trying to clean things up mm -hmm. and we're still quarantining. So we still haven't got to, like, break down of society yet. Mm -hmm. Like, we're close, but it only has six episodes. Right. Which I was like, does that Did even count? Cut short? Or like... No, that was the plan. Oh, okay. Because it was to lead in to The Walking Dead. So it ended one week, and then Walking Dead started the next week. Um, next thing, there's been a lot of new stuff this hmm. season. Well, um, it's, it's, beginning, it's the fall. It's the fall. It's the fall. And Colbert uh -huh. took over The Late Show. Right. Uh, you know, the show was created for David Letterman because he was hosting uh, the show that comes on after The Tonight Show, the late night or uh, right late. i don't remember actually whatever conan o'brien hosted before that it was david letterman he got all butthurt because <laughs> jay leno took over for johnny carson, carson. so That's he right. went to cbs and started his own show mm -hmm. so he's colbert is actually the first person who did was like to host this show that it wasn't created for right you know so it's we don't really know what to expect because we saw Stephen Colbert for years as Stephen Colbert. Is it the character? The character. <laughs> and now he's himself. But what we learn is that the way Stephen Colbert acts has always been him. Right. Like the only thing he was making up was like his politics. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's kind of the same, but <laughs> he gets guests that maybe other shows weren't like couldn't get or wouldn't get like he's had a Supreme court justice, you know, he has like members of the cabinet and he's doing senators and he's like, kind of like raising the bar <laughs> for how he gets these guests. It's <laughs> like, because he knows his politics. I yeah. think what, and like now he's not like being a jerk to all his guests. So people like, you know, talking to somebody who actually like knows things and yeah. isn't just looking for like a sound bite or a funny gag. It's like, Oh, Stephen Colbert knows what he's talking about. Right. Like I'll go on. But you know, Bernie Sanders, who's a democratic pre presidential candidate was on there. And like Yo-Yo Ma was on. Really? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, you were, you're really like trying to do something like more sophisticated at late night, you know, like, like it. no, that's no. Great. and it's really cool. And it's, He's got some good writers, it seems. I, I think it's pretty funny. Um, and he just seems, like, humbled by the whole experience. That's and, so funny. You know, that he's in, like, a new stage created for him from the Ed Sullivan Theater. And, you know. It's impressive. <laughs> it is. And he's had, like, CEOs on. He had, like, Elon Musk from, really? like, Tesla and SpaceX. He had uh, the CEO of, like... Snapchat and Uber, and he's had game developers on. He had PewDiePie on his show. Oh, that's right. I heard about that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hey, if you like PewDiePie, subscribe to our channel, too. Right. Yeah. We're, like, the same thing, We're like the right? same exact thing. Yeah. And I got this great Californian accent that all the ladies love, right? <laughs> right? All the ladies love that uh, Southern Californian accent. It's true. I do a quite a... Quite, quite a good quite amount of that accent. That's what I'm known for, stammering. They also like love that. it when you say like every other word. Dude, it's true. It's true. It's like, it's awesome. Ah. <laughs> Bro out. Are there any other shows I'm missing? Anything you heard about or have seen? Um, I, I've, we've covered a lot of the ones I've heard about I know. recently. Um I, I'm a big Rick and Morty fan. I just finished season two. You haven't covered that. Yet. No, I haven't. I 
I've kind of fallen into the like I'll wait till I can binge watch like <laughs> five seasons of it, hoping it gets that. Many. It's very good. I'm just gonna leave it at that. I don't want to spoil any jokes for you because they're fun and it's a show that I feel stays ahead of its audience. Is so. it uh, like the? 10 to 15 minute kind of format where you get two and a half hour block no it's like um no it's it's a half hour it's, okay. a, tw it's a 20 minute show yeah oh, okay. and cool, it even cool. has an after post credits joke usually so watch those after the credits um usually they're plot pertinent so they're funny and that's <laughs> a dan Harmon show dan Harmon and a, uh, a man named justin roiland um who's very funny he's also the majority of the voices on the show oh okay um, so yeah he, he does a good job then because i really rick and morgan i enjoy yeah. those voices a lot from yeah. what i have seen i'm like I, okay and he gets like legit people maurice lamarche is on there and uh what's his name who does the voice of uh, yakko and uh, um Black oh and, i will uh, never remember spongebob and uh you know like tom kenny and all these like really great people are on so that they show. get like real voice actors like like real deal voice actors are on that show and it's pretty cool phil hendry of the oh. voice uh personality uh, radio personality phil hendry's on that who show. who did voices on a few uh, futurama as all the freedom waterfall right, that's right. freedom waterfall junior a bit of Senior. A bit of trivia about Phil Hendry actually is uh, when I used to listen to his radio show back on KFI years ago, he used to say that he never wanted to do animation ever. Like that was something he was like, oh no, I will never do animated shows ever. And apparently Mike Judge was the guy who changed his mind on that. He was like, oh please, will you do a King of the Hill voice? And he like started doing some King of the Hill. He did King of the Hill voices? He did. And I don't remember who he did. He did like a character, like once yes. or one or two characters. Everyone did King of the Hill Everyone voices. did King of the Hill. He did like one or two Tom King Petty was a reoccurring character I know. on King of the Hill. And uh, what's his name? Um... Like bones going off. Uh, Chuck, Chuck Mangione was. Uh, oh yeah, he was a recurring joke. He would work at like the at the Megalo Megalo <laughs> He lived at the Megalo <laughs> uh, That was fantastic. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's a great show. You should check it out. I There's should check. Cool that people out. are on it. Uh, cool voices are on it. Um. <laughs> well, I think that's uh, enough TV for now. I'm sure I'm missing some shows, but those are the ones that really stick out in my mind mm. that I've been watching and. Uh, I, I do watch a lot of television, I have to say, but uh, someone has to, right? Someone has to do it. Uh, so for everyone here at Colin and Ryan, uh, Colin and Ryan would like to say uh, thank you for watching. And if you like this video, <laughs> we will make some more where we just kind of talk at you about TV or maybe do some video games or movies or whatever the kids are into, their Pokemon cards <laughs> or... I don't. Whatever. I can't do the Pokemon, but I I play a lot of other video games. Oh, okay. Um, okay. I play a lot of video games. That, that, well, that's good. That's good because we're like reverse. Then I watch a lot of TV. You play a lot a of lot video of games. games. Uh, I played State... some Pokemon, but not not all the Pokemon. And I I watched a lot of Pokemon. But I hear there's new Pokemon. There's a lot of there's the Pokemon doesn't stop. It just it's the gift that keeps on giving. Well, good. Uh, those pocket monsters are here to stay. <laughs> So, in this long send-off, uh, thank you for watching. Please subscribe below. Still trying to hit that 20 viewer mark uh, someday. And uh, take care. Ta-ta. That's good.